Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited today to bring God's word to you. Now today is Friday, praise God. Now it means you're going to have a whole weekend to go through all those messages again and again and again. Praise God. That's what you should do weekends. See, you just get it and start playing it in the morning. Now you're not rushing to work. Just play it and listen again and again and again. And get refreshed, get blessed, and let this truth begin to walk in your life. Because listening to these things one time is not enough. And I want to encourage you also, if you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, I invite you to do so today. Subscribe and put on the notif notification button so when the message is posted, you will be among the first to know. And then you can listen to it early enough and you know, choose the time you want to listen to it. Praise God. So subscribe and invite your friends to also subscribe and get these words to bless their lives. Now, before going to today's broadcast, can we call for our daily bread? Join me in faith on this Friday and say, Father, I demand my daily bread for today and for the weekend. Praise God. Yes, it's coming to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. I declare provision is coming to you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. See, now you heard me say, for today and for the weekend. Yeah, you remember the manna that God was giving to He told them, on the sixth day, you shall gather manna for two days. Now, on every other day, you shall only gather for one day. Just take what you will eat every day. But on the sixth day, you shall gather for two days. Now, some people tried it. They gathered for two days and it became warm. But on the sixth day, they all gathered for two days and it was okay. Praise God. Now, that's how these things work. It's called daily bread. Daily bread. And you find some folks, you know, we were talking about angelic activities yesterday how our fruitfulness causes them to be fruitful. So you see, there are angels that have been assigned to you whose job is to see to it that you get supplies every day. Now, it is your understanding of these things that will release your confession because that is how it works. When we know, and God knows that we know, even the angels become active because now they become accountable. But when you are lascivious, when you are just there, you don't know what belongs to you, you live life anyhow, you struggle, angels will not be quick. You know why they will not be quick? Because you will not be in place to do the things, like I told you yesterday, the charge that God gave to the angels, he gave them sins. I told you about a cable TV angel. Now the truth about it is, God had already instructed that angel before the world began. Now that's the reason we were using a different cable TV where we were staying before. That's when we got to this place, I began to have the struggle in my heart. Don't use that cable TV, use this other one, which is better than the former one we're using. More expensive and better. I just had that struggle. Oh, I mean, you're moving things, so you're supposed to carry, but I told my wife, I said, no, let's leave it there. So what are we going to use? I said, we're going to use this other network. But then I began to ask the Lord, I said, Lord, this is what I'm thinking. What do you think about it? I was praying out until the Lord told me, go for it. Now, you see what I was explaining to you. The reason I had that struggle is because the Lord had made the provision for this one already there. So it was for me to fit in. If we had brought the one we are using before, it wouldn't have fitted in this new place. Spiritually, I mean. Because the angel was not told concerning this one. So that's why you must be sensitive in every decision you're making. You must be sensitive enough to know that things you enjoy doing every day, the grace I've left. 
you must be sensitive enough to know that, ah, uh-uh, no. That's why Jesus said, he that is born of the spirit is like the wind. Nobody understands him. You think this guy likes eating jollof rice. Every day he must eat jollof rice. Every day he must eat jollof rice. One day he just comes and you give him jollof rice. Say, well, why did you give me this? So I thought you liked it. I'm like, ah, please don't serve me this again. And you're wondering, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? So maybe there's a way they prepared it that he did that. But he didn't even taste it. I said, maybe we'll try again tomorrow. And tomorrow I said, hey, who brought that your favorite jollof rice? He said, please, don't, don't, don't tempt me. Don't try this again. Now, what do you think is going on? The grace, the season for that is gone. And he's ready to move on to the next season of his life. Because he's like the wind. Never trapped in any way. He follows the promptings of the Spirit of God. That's a blessed man. Because you see all those promptings is because there are angels responsible. And there are new angels. You're stepping into a new season. The angels of the old season are not the same angels in the new season. They are not the same. So you must understand when there's a change of season in your life. And you must brace up to walk in the new season as led by the Spirit of God. Understand your body. Understand your emotions. Understand the walkings. As a child of God, we are not supposed to be sick. But you know, sometimes our bodies go through different things. Now as a child of God, you should know before anything happens. You know, I was, a few days ago, it just came to my spirit, and I, I was talking to my wife. I said, I sense I will soon get another phone. So she was like, why, you want to buy? I, know, I said, I don't know. I, I just sense the time, the season of this phone is over. I kept saying that. Now, by the third day, I said it consistently. You know, every day, I don't know why I was just saying it. I won't tell you today that the Holy Spirit was telling me. It, just, it was just coming to my spirit. And as it comes, I'll just say it. And then my wife was wondering, why are you saying it? By the third day, my son was using my phone. And he brought it to me. And I saw my, the screen of the phone turning white. And just, you know how it starts from one edge. And then just cover. He couldn't use the phone, so he brought it to me. I said, Daddy, your phone is bad. So, I, of course, I said, oh, wow. I really need this phone now. So, I've got to fix it. So, I, I got ready, took it to where they would fix it. They tried several screens to change it. It didn't work. And then, sitting there with them, I remembered. You've been saying the season. Get a new phone. Ah. Get a new phone. So I said, okay. Actually, the season for this phone is over. Now, is God interested in all those things? I'm telling you the truth. Yes, he is. So now you have to, okay, Lord, what, what phone should I go for? And you go there and say, let me see. Okay, Lord, which one should I go for? And he points it out, go for this one. He said, all these things before God? Yes! That's how we live. So when you see God taking care of everything in our lives, that's the secret. Because everything in our life, I just told you about phone. I told you about cable network angel. You don't just do it because, oh, okay, my phone is bad. I need to get, hey. And guess what? Immediately, I got <laughs> a new phone. And then I traveled back. And then the, the old phone, I said, let me just try. Well, I don't understand why this phone, they couldn't fix this phone. And the phone was fixed. I said, hmm, I understand now what God was doing. <laughs> Truly, he began to bring it to my mind. He began to bring it to my mind. So if you don't learn how to monitor these things, you will get into trouble. Now, when it was coming to my mind, I did my own analysis, whether to accept it or to reject it, because that's what happened. 
No true believer just dies. It comes to him first. Hey, death is coming. Death is coming. If he doesn't know how to handle himself, he may end up dead. But the one who knows how to handle himself will escape death. Simple as that. That's how it works. Why will he escape? What if it is the will of God for him to die? It is never the will of God for any man to die. Never, never, never the will of God. I'll tell you that for truth. Never. God will not just wake up and say, it's time for you to die. Oh, but there are times God says, oh, um, I was praying about somebody and God, it happens to me. You're praying about this situation and God tells you, don't worry about this situation. You know, leave it. So you just know the person's going to die, you know. But God told you, don't worry about it. So how you now say it's not God's will for the person to die? You see, when we teach you some of these things, because you see, you can't walk with God if your knowledge is low. You can't walk with God if your reasoning is low. So if your reason cannot accept life, because now you're praying, oh God, this person should not die. Yes. But then, what comes afterwards is the person capable enough to live life in the next season. See that now? Because the truth about it is, if God sees that the challenges that are coming ahead, you will not be capable enough to deal with it. He will rather take you out of the space. Not because that was his ultimate will for your life, but because you have not grown with him to accept instructions that he's going to give you. Now, these are things we learn. And I tell people the simplest way to grow is to learn, Lord, anything you want me to do, just tell me and that's what I'll do. And then you begin to practice it. So the Lord knows that if I tell this my son, sit at home for two months, he will do it. But if you have not chained yourself and God knows that, look, there is a season coming and your leg is going to put you in trouble. And he knows that if he tells you sit at home for two days, your legs will eat you, you will go out. He thinks about it in every way. There will be nothing to keep in one place because he had tried it several times. It didn't work because of you. So he will look at it and say, see, the pain that this thing is going to bring is going to be so much on this person. It's better you take him out of the way. So he will do that. That does not mean that is his will for your life. That was just convenience based on who you are. So hear me. Grow. 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 So when those promptings begin to come, we say, Lord, uh-uh, I refuse to die. Nah, no way, I refuse to die. How? Why? And then you go before the Lord and say, Lord, what, what's this I'm hearing? And then the Lord will say, son, this is what I want you to do. Because he would speak life to you. He said, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And then you obey him and do what he tells you to do. And you escape that. Now, at that moment, hear me. At that moment, other people may have received the signal concerning you. Some may be bold enough to tell you. Some will be quiet. But then they wait. It doesn't happen. The same way you will sense when good things are coming your way. You will sense it. We don't live life by chance. That's the fruitfulness we're talking about. It will just come. Hey, you will change your car very soon. Now, when those promptings are coming, pause and say, okay, Lord, what would you have me do? For example, when that prompting was coming to my spirit, you'll soon get a new phone. I began to think about it, like, Why? And I said, this, this phone has actually served me. Over two years now, I've been using this same phone. And it's getting full and many other things. So I thought, 
It's a good thing. So I accepted it. Now, at, at the time I accepted it, I should have taken the step to actually go to get one. But at that didn't really cross my mind. Just like, well, um, when I travel back, I'll get. That's what I thought about. But then, I was not in control of the timing. So if the Lord like, no, 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 it should not cross this day. Because the angels that have been put in charge, they know the kind of phone I'm supposed to be using at that time. You don't understand these things. You don't know. Learn to put everything about you. Put it in God's hands. How do you put it in God's hands? Let him talk to you about it. Even to buying clothes. Let him talk to you about it. Oh Lord, I'm thinking of making this cloth. What do you think? Oh, he has not said anything. I'm like, okay. okay. Lord, I'm thinking about this cloth. And sometimes, he just gives them to you free of charge. He just lays it in someone's heart. Someone goes and says, hey, I thought of buying you this cloth. I think this is your size. Oh, I saw this suit in a shop and I just thought about you. Now, you were over here like, Lord, I want to buy some new clothes. They even come on close. You're asking God, don't you have the money to buy? It's respected of whether you have the money or not. You don't realize. Listen, there are clothes you will wear that will bring favor in your life. There are clothes you wear that will bring darkness over your life. Now, now, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about their demonic clothes. I know, understand what I'm talking about. Because he has apportioned your seasons. And angels have been given charge concerning you. And it is just possible he has commanded an angel on a Friday, the 26th of August, which is today. My son is going to come with a red shirt and white button. When you see him, open this door for him. Now, here you are, two weeks ago, it drops in your heart. You need to buy new clothes. You're like, ah, Lord, I'm, I'm sensing I need to buy some new clothes. Okay, let me walk into a clothes shop. And then you walk into this shop, and you see this red shirt and white button, and you are compelled to buy it. Or someone brings it to you, whatever the means, however it comes. And then, oh, thank you, thank you. And then here comes the Friday, and you want to dress up, and he just drops it, hey, why don't you wear that red shirt? Oh, yeah, I've not worn this shirt. Ah, hoo -hoo. Let me wait. I'll look good on it. And then you wait. You think you're just wearing a shirt. You think you're just looking good. You don't realize that you have opened the door of favor in your life. And you step out that day, someone sees you and says, hey, he marks you that day. Ah, oh, that nice shirt, nice shirt. Wow, I like this guy. Nothing may happen that day physically. But something has transpired in the spirit because the angel who had been commanded before the foundation of the world, his day of fulfillment has come. He sees you with the red shirt as God commanded him. He opens the door that God commanded him to open it when he sees you on that cloth. Soon enough, days afterwards, there is a call. Are you so so and so? Oh, yeah. Um, we want to fix a meeting with you concerning this, concerning this, concerning that. Oh, yeah. C can you handle it? Oh, sure, I can handle it. Oh, please, come over. All right, you fix a meeting and something big comes your way. Hey, I wonder, how did you get... Say, hey, there was one, one day, you know, you came with wearing a red shirt. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. That's there I asked about it. Then I was told that you're into this and that. Oh, really? Yeah. You didn't know. See why? It's important we will talk about bearing fruit. We're talking about every detail of your life. Every detail of your life. Let the word of God feel every, everything about you. You want to go cut your hair? Lord, ah, I'm thinking of cutting his hair. <laughs> I know you're wondering, come on now, I ain't taking this thing too far. But I'm telling you how to live in safety. I'm telling you how to live 
being fruitful. I'm telling you how to live, producing the kind of fruit that God wants us to produce in every detail. And when we do that, we help everyone around us, everyone that's connected to us to fulfill their own part. And guess what's going on? The purpose of God is being fulfilled on the earth. Because that person that is bringing a good job to you was commanded also to do so. And you need to be in place for that to take place. Praise <laughs> God. My time is up. I pray for you today. As the month of August is coming to an end, may the fruit that God has commanded you and ordained you to bear, let them begin to mature now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every favor your fruit was supposed to bring to you. I declare the name of the Lord Jesus within these few days to the end of the month of August. Begin to see the result of it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, all week we've been talking about being fruitful and being productive. I pray for everyone that has been listening to me. That right now, let manifestations from their fruit begin. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Have the best weekend ever. I love you very much. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.